Okay, hello everybody. Uh, so hope all you are doing well. Today we are going to continue with new chapter talking about the Markov decision uh, processes basically and see different, different algorithms. But last week what we've talked about, we've talked about the multi arm bandit and we've seen different approaches to uh, solve the problem and uh, and we saw how we can uh, achieve uh, like epsilon greedy and uh, and some more automatic techniques to uh, solve the multi arm bandit problem. So uh, today, first of all, we talk about the Markov decision processes. Then we talk about dynamic programming, and we will see different algorithms, policy iteration, and value iteration, and uh, and uh, we will see how we can use Markov decision processes to solve uh, different kinds of reinforcement learning problems. So uh, at the beginning I will talk about the environment dynamics today. Then we will talk about the stochastic process with uh, uh, Markov assumption. Then we talk about the stationary assumption of the MDPs. Then I will go through policy iteration, value iteration, and even I will cover modified uh, policy iteration algorithm that uh, we will see how, uh, how each one of these are working and uh, what are the benefits, what are the comparison, and which one does better. Of course, if we have time, we'll cover all of these. Uh, let's see how it goes. It goes. So at the beginning, um, let's start with the answering what is the Markov processes for who have the SLAM course with me. We already introduced it there. But here we want to go more in detail a little bit and uh, uh, understand what is the, um, how from state space we want to move to Markov process because later we want to use it in our calculations basically. So let's have some definitions. We say Markov chain or Markov process is a stochastic model describing a sequence of possible events in the environment. Then the probability of the each event depends on the state of the previous event. So uh, since the environment is changing all the time, previous event, what is happening in the last sequence, of course, it is affecting new, uh, new incomings. We say the control loop, uh, we know we have sequence of the states, actions, and rewards. That so far we clearly uh, define them, but also we have certain time steps that these time steps can be defined by us how accurate they should be. Like I can consider the time step as one millisecond, I can consider this as one minute and one hour, and depends on the situation that I have in Marco processes definition. So basically there can be two scenarios for the environment. Environment as we defined already can be deterministic. That is simpler to plan for future because everything is deterministic. And second one is the uh, when environment is a stochastic. So when environment is stochastic, we have uncertainty, we have error, and that error should be modeled by our processes. So that we can say, we want to, uh, actually the process is dynamic, and both reward and next state we can, uh, we want to model it to, uh, to, to show it in a stochastic form. As you can see, so that we have state action, reward pair, and this goes during uh, time, and uh, consequently, it, uh, first one uh, happens, second one happens, third one happens, and we move forward. This is formal representation of the Markov processes. So underlying processes of every dynamic system has a general structure. What does it mean? It means that with sufficient history of the uh, what is happening, we can predict the dynamicity of the environment. Let's make it more clear. If we, if we talk about the temperature prediction, of course,
course, like if I want to talk about the prediction, uh, prediction of temperature inside this room, of course, never it is going to change from like 20, 30 to suddenly to zero, right? Suddenly to minus 10. It's impossible almost with the dynamicity that we know from the environment. So if we have enough information from environment, we can say, okay, the temperature may change if I uh, turn on AC like two, five degrees depending on what's the value we de declare there. If you don't have AC, AC, like the environment is normal, usually it changes minus 5 to positive 5, something around between. So this is the dynamicity that based on the history that I can have, I can understand. So, uh, of course, uh, this is pretty decent uh, example to understand the dynamicity, that we can get it with short history from environment. And as we mentioned again, uh, we can have the deterministic and probabilistic form of both uh, this representation. So if I want to explain, first of all, uh, in Markov processes, the stochastic processes, we can say state S in this state space can be shown as probability form, as you can see here. Probability of the state ST given by all other states. So it means that from all the other states, the probability to going to be at state ST can be formally represented in this form. If you want to have a look at the figure, it's like we have different states. Probability of, for example, being at state 2 from all possible other states can be shown in form of probability in this mathematical simple form. So we have a note that we should be aware also the conditional distribution can be very large and, uh, and uh, uh, due to these relations because all are connected to each other from each state we can move to the other ones that uh, this is a challenge that we should be aware of what is the solution if the like if all the states are connected to each other and explosion of the uh, states relations between each other uh, we need to consider some assumptions that one is very important one from Markov assumption Markov assumption says, okay, we can simply uh, rely on previous state S in finite history. For example, in, uh, in some other courses like Islam, we define belief and previous belief and everything relies on only past state. But here we can say, okay, we can have K previous states that are important for us and we want to limit our state connections, probabilities that we want to calculate to K series of last uh, history that I have to, to predict the probability of dynamic dynamicity of the environment and so that my reinforcement learning, my algorithm can based on that make decisions and uh, try to learn whatever I need. So this is called Markov assumption. And second one uh, is uh, stationary uh, process assumption that that uh, the environment dynamics uh, should be considered as static during time. What does it mean? It means that in the next slides I will show you uh, what is happening but if I want to briefly explain to you so during time maybe I have more parameters more elements to be considered so that kind of I need to consider it as stationary. We will get into it soon. So about the Markov assumption, if we want to clarify, we can have two, uh, two general limitations, like adding limitations for state states complexity that they are connected to each other, so, uh, like from, from uh, infinity number of states that I come to the uh, to one state. One is like this first order Markov process that says okay only S1 can be achieved from previous one. 
S2 can be achieved from previous one. So this is called first order Markov process. Again, I know some of you have SLAM course with me. There we, be, we talk about, like, let me clarify for you here. So the Markov assumption that we are talking in different sciences, based on the researches that develop, the, the terms and keywords that we are using are different a little bit. Sometimes we call it as previous belief. But in reinforcement learning, we call it as like first order Markov process. So uh, those are all same concept, but, but the definition and explanations are, uh, uh, are a little bit different and maybe confusing for readers. Anyway, so here we say first order Markov processes and depending on the previous one, that can be shown as probability of ST given by ST minus one, only probability that ST can be achieved by previous one. But the second one is the k-ordered Markov process that k can be different here. So if we say k is true, it means that we are limiting our states in Markov processes to two, so that each one of the states can be, ach can be achieved by two previous ones. That, that two previous ones can be continuous or can be in any definition that we have depending on the environment that we can have. So that we can write probability of ST given by two states, ST minus two, for example, ST minus one. So why we are talking about, for example, K order Markov process here? Because uh, we are going to develop algorithms that using the dynamicity of the environment, the history, try to predict to do choose actions. Because of that, we need to understand this concept so that when we are writing equations, uh, they are uh, using these concepts over there. Is it clear? Okay, uh, I've written advantage here, reduce the computational complexity. Uh, note that we need to add more variables in order to achieve it also. Of course, we need to uh, do some stuff in order to it. So that was one of the uh, limitations that we talked about. Second one is the stationary process assumption, actually second assumption that we have. Uh, how we can achieve a stationary process? We can say, okay, add the new variables of system to the consideration of the uh, Markov processes so that finally we achieve to a point that during time everything is stationary and uh, the, the dynamicity is stationary. You may of course now become confused. What does it mean? Let me clarify. Uh, we can say, okay, if we, uh, if we consider the uh, conditional distribution as probability of S prime given by S, what we can do in this example, for example, let's say we have a robot and this robot, with this robot we want to define a stationary process assumption. So if we consider only right arm of the robot, so let's consider we have this robot and we only con want to consider right arm of the robot in order to achieve a uh, stationary process assumption, we need to include all dynamicity of the problem that we have. Here what we have at the beginning, we can consider, okay, the end effector, end effector is the end point of, for example, arm that robot is moving. And based on that, add the parameters that are dynamic to our system. For example, here we can consider the position of the uh, right arm in the vector, right arm x, y, z on 3D environment, where is this? Then we can consider rule pitch yaw, what is the angle or orientation of the end vector. So I can move in the 3D space, my arm, and I can rotate it in 3 degrees, right? So what I've done here, I added the dynamic processes that, um, the dynamicity of the environment 
into consideration. Um, but what do you think that is missing here? Can be anything else that can bring uh, that that can make our environment more dynamic, or I need to assume it also. speed correct how fast I can go to this one of these this position and how fast I can move my orientation so speed is also one of the elements that can bring dynamicity to our model so what can I do uh, if I need it I can add for example in, this, uh, in, in addition to the XYZ root pitch here I can add speed for each element that I have. The speed of the velocity of the x, velocity of the y, velocity of the z, rule pitch yaw again, velocity for each one. And how can I make sure that my process is stationary by adding all the elements that makes my problem dynamic? It is kind of whatever is important, whatever can affect my uh, actions to be chosen, I'm bringing into consideration in my system. Clear? So this is very important in enforcement learning because when you face with any problem, robotic applications or whatever it is, you have some variables, you have dynamicity that you need to be uh, aware and uh, um, have open mind to choose those. But what is the challenge? The challenge is here, adding more variables uh, increases the computational complexity, of course. Increases my action space or state space, and this makes problem harder to be solved. And what's the solution for that? What can be the idea? Anybody? So there is not exact answer for that. It is like just making trade-off. You need to make tra trade-off between how you want to solve your problem and how many elements you want to uh, add to your system. Of course, some of them you have to, you must add, otherwise your solution is totally wrong. But some of them you can ignore. You can say, okay, Let's say speed is not important. Why? Because in my robot arm, uh, I want to pick this object. It takes one minute or one second, doesn't matter. If you have that view, then, then you say, okay, the speed is, velocity is not important. But, but if it's important because of reasons like some object crossing here, you should do it fastly, quickly. Your robot needs to grab it, for example, find the solution, do, do it quickly, then that's another history. So we need to make trade-off in order to uh, 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 hold both stationary and Markov assumption together. Any question? So now we want to, uh, so far we were talking about Markov processes. Now we are talking about Markov decision processes a little bit. Uh, the concepts are similar. I'm gonna have some definitions just for you. You already know most of them like reward and probabilities, but let's have a review kind of. Uh, assuming, assuming that we have Markov assumption and stationary, uh, uh, stationary dynamicity in the environment, prediction of the actions can be like this, that uh, probability of the ST added by K given by uh, uh, ST can be achieved. And based on that, based on this definition, we can say we have transition, uh, the, the calculation of the state transition from S to S prime. 
so that I can write a matrix or an array or uh, something that represents the probabilities of the all possible states to next state that I can achieve. What does it mean? It means that I can declare, okay, probability of going this state, this tail to this tail. Probability of this tail to this tail. That, this is called state transition. Probability. And can be shown in this form. Therefore, we are using, as I said, state transition that we want to uh, use it uh, to make decisions and uh, we enter to the Markov decision processes formally here uh, you may think okay uh, but that's that's not easy to have and do we have it we will discuss it in detail state transition probability at the beginning we are kind of are gonna assume that we have it because in some problems also we can assume that we have it later on uh, we will release it and uh, say okay if we don't have it what will happen uh, to to modify the algorithms that we are learning so in mdps again we have the uh, mm, it is it is kind of classical formalization of sequ uh, sequential sequential decision mark uh, decision making and it is a uh, uh, subsequent stations or states of the future rewards uh, that you know already. Uh, MDPs also include delay rewards and uh, and we need to also think about, as we explained already, trade-off between immediate and delayed reward in the system that is in the definition of the MDPs, Markov Decision Processes. Uh, in MDPs we estimate the Q star S and A the Q value, the optimum Q value of the state and action. It means that uh, for each state, we want to find the optimal action, optimum action that uh, we can achieve. And or we can also, uh, uh, same as the Q value, we can also calculate or estimate the value of the S, the value, V star of the S. That it means the optimum value of each being at each state. So we continue a couple of slides about the definitions. Already we know, we just want to review them in formal form. Uh, MDPs uh, is discrete time statistic control processes. Now you should know what does it mean. Discrete time, we defined it. Statistic, we defined it. Control processes, we defined it. Already I explained all of these independently a couple of minutes last week. Then it is, of course, providing mathematical framework of the uh, modeling decision making that can be mm, partially random and uh, partially under control decision of the uh, system that we have. We will see how, how this is happening with, with algorithms that today we are going to talk about. And also it is a tool as a mathematical uh, uh, mm, Formalization for formal presentation of the order of the analyze that we have in reinforcement learning. So that MDP will be a kind of ground truth and the, the environment that our all calculations will be in these states inside and, uh, and trying to calculate what we have. Similarly, as what we discussed at the beginning here, again, uh, for Markov decision process, we have the agent and the environment, and with interaction, with doing action, we get reward and state. But here, in form of the uh, kind of MDPs assumptions that we discussed uh, so far in the, uh, in the interacting between the MDP, that agent, instead of environment directly, physical environment, uh, kind of considers MDP to implementation of the what we are going to do. So it doesn't mean that like about we are not talking about simulation or real environment. Both simulation and real environment are coming to the form of the Markov decision processes so that our algorithms mount on these MDPs. It looks like this. 
if you have a finite MDP that some, some way it limits, we have state zero, for example, state one, two, three, that states changing during time. For each state, we can do action to go to uh, next state, or we can directly go there uh, by like nothing to doing. If the time is changing, maybe states are changing, but by doing action, we can change the state too. And meanwhile, we are getting rewards. So I think everything is very clear. So far, we repetitively talked about this. Like we have states, we have actions, and we have rewards. But formally, we bring it into a definition of the MDPs for now. Nothing too much new. We talked about the reward. If you remember, we, can, we could define RT, reward T, as reward of the state T, and being in the action T, uh, but with doing the action uh, at time T. Uh, but the point is here that we have, uh, usually we assume it is stationary also and is not changing during time the parameters and metrics for calculation the reward that we have. So for example, um, of course we can consider it, but uh, for simplicity for now, we can say, okay, every time being at this state, whatever is happening, the reward is same value. If I'm here, the reward is same. Of course value is changing, but the reward is same at being at each state. Doesn't matter which time we are. You may have complex system, complex problem. You may want even change the reward during time. And of course, that makes it more complex. And, and for now, we just consider reward is stationary. OK, clear? We usually also define a big reward for the terminal or success or win. I multiple times uh, mentioned it. We want to design an algorithm that maximizes our uh, accumulated reward during all time. So you already know this multiple times. Now, uh, let me a little bit talk about the assumptions that we will consider. So based on my, my explanations, you've seen that maybe I've, uh, I've, had, I've introduced different things to you that you may say, okay, we have multiple options to, uh, to assume, but the, the speech that I will have, uh, at least during this chapter, uh, the assumptions are kind of like this. The environment is fully observable, discrete environment for now. We have complete model and transition dynamics of the environment. So this is important. We have transition dynamics of the environment. We know already. And uh, so because of that, we are not learning the transition dynamics for now. Uh, that our system is not going to learn it for now. Later on, we will see with other algorithms how to learn it too. We have stochastic processes that we have uncertainty. And action selection is sequential as can depend on the previous ones too. And is not like uh, they are not dependent, independent of each other. For example, for a multi-arm bandit, we had independency, but here we have dependency. For example, for path planning from here to there, my decision going to the left is totally different from going to the right because all the scenario next actions would be different. So uh, the challenge that we have, uh, what if process in the environment, so uh, for now I wanna also answer some questions. If, if the process in the environment is infinity, what we do, last week we answered it, what we do, so if we have the, uh, we want to maximize accumulated reward, right? And uh, if the environment is infinity, what we've done? You don't remember? It's supposed to be. So, so I want to calculate this, right? And this is T. If T is limited, that's fine. 100, 1,000. I can, I can calculate it. But when it's infinity, we introduce this con factor. We introduce the, this term over here that we said with this con factor, we can make more, pay, more weights on the history that I want 
But the far ones, a little bit of story, then they, they are, they, they can be considered as zero. Right? And that comes from this discount factor. And this is very important in reinforcement learning. Whatever algorithm we are going to study, you will see this term over there. Advanced ones that, of course, they are also uh, using this. We will see in Bellman equation later on soon. So we can add discount factor. Uh, we added discount factor to consider the, to overcome the uh, problem of the infinity uh, uh, mm, sequence of the environment but but then like you may say okay we said that here the, in the assumptions that uh, we, we don't consider the continuous and that that, that one uh, discrete we, con we consider the uh, short history so that you can have a stationary value here don't put t here you can say okay 0 0.9 and it's not changing based on t. That is also common. We just can remove this part, t part, then this con factor times z part. It can be static value in all our calculations simply. Also, that's very common to be seen in different solutions for, uh, for the algorithms that we have. So uh, the value of the discount factor is be between 0 and 1. Uh, and the idea, I, I also explained that a future reward expected to be higher, we can uh, discount them so that uh, this is also another perspective that I can also control the importance based on the, uh, I can say, okay, uh, based on changing the value, I can say, okay, uh, in the history that I have, in future, the reward that I'm getting is supposed to be higher because after some time, of the trying future state states reward should be higher than what I'm getting now uh, at that state so that I'm going toward the answer that I have also uh, this is second perspective that you can consider so uh, if we say what if the process of the environment is infinity uh, some something else that we can do is just getting the average of the some uh, some history that we have and but then of course we need to uh, uh, do this manually but getting the average not 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 adding discount factor over there so we are getting ready to start algorithms that today we are going to talk about we define that in MDPs we have states actions we have reward model that can be represented in this form in this form but new thing that we have is the transition model so transition model is probability of going to state t from for example here from previous state and previous action that we've done so what does it mean it means that i wanna i, I will have transition model that already i know probability of being at state t this state from previous one with the action that i've done we say okay if we assume transition probability model we have it we know this in the problem that we have and in the example we will soon see in the technique that we will study we will soon see we have this con factor gamma and we have also horizon uh, that that is kind of can be in, uh, we have different definitions some in some books uh, some studies you will see horizon H sometimes you will we will call it also episodes or uh, time steps that we have uh, during each try that we are doing almost all the concepts are the same mm. so when you see for example horizon just just is, it means that where we are going to end the uh, end the episode so the goal is mapping the state action to finding optimal uh, control optimal policy that is clear uh, if you wanna a little bit more clarify for example in trade market the states are share status so how much are the values of for example each share how much uh, the property is 
The actions are buying, selling, holding. The reward model is profit that we can get. Transition model is stochastic change of the market. The discount factor, some value that we define for it, for example, 0 0.9. Uh, the horizon is here, infinity, for example. If you want to just, uh, uh, just show it. What is the goal? The goal is uh, when to buy and the when to sell the shares to maximize the profit that we have in this specific example. So formally, we can say we want to find the best policy pi to optimize uh, or uh, to maximize my reward. So if you if you recap quickly before uh, starting the algorithm that we are going to talk about, policy specification it specifies an action in the environment. We have we have the state space and policy says what to do to take in each state and our, uh, under Markov assumption, we can present policy as action t is equal to pi st. So formally in mass, uh, mathematical representation, we show it, indications we show it, like pi st means that uh, actually our action, what is the action uh, based on the policy that we have and state. What was the policy is like, you can consider an array of whatever to do, it shows the map of if I'm here, what to do? If I'm there, what to do? If I'm there, what to do? And we want to learn it. We want to uh, uh, wanna see that how we can achieve it. And today, main topic is about this. We will see two basic algorithms how to achieve the uh, policy. One is directly talking about policy update. Second one is talking about the value. That value can lead us to final policy too updating different techniques. So policy optimization again means optimizing mapping state to action and therefore uh, we need to estimate value function to evaluate current state environment. So estimate the value function. Again now uh, you should quickly uh, know that the value function we defined and we want to estimate. The value optimal policy as we discussed, if it's optimum, can be shown as v star pi as st, and therefore it is greater than the value pi st. What does it mean? It means that the optimum value for each one of the states that I have in time t, of course, since it is optimal, is greater or equal to the value that in any time, randomly at the initial or whatever it is, I can have. So we are going to see some techniques that we have this or generate this ourselves, then move to this part. So that, based on this introduction, we come to two, uh, two famous algorithms uh, in reinforcement learning. One is policy iteration, second one is value iteration that I'm going to uh, talk about them today and we will see examples how we can implement. If we have time also we have uh, a Python exam implementation based on the classes courses that we have and we will uh, talk about all what is happening. Any question up to here before talking about policy iteration? Is everything clear for everybody? Okay, good. We have policy iteration algorithm that is based on the MDPs, first of all. What does it mean? It means that whatever I was talking now today, I'm going to consider. So you should be kind of, you can consider that you, I loaded your RAM in your operating system. Now we are going to use them. So this algorithm, we want to optimize policy directly. What does it mean? Optimize policy. Now you should imagine we have the state space. And in the state space, we have policy. And each policy indicates what to do at each state. And I want to optimize policy. Each one of the policies that I have, I want to optimize 
make them as best choice of solving the problem that I have. Okay? We want to see how. We want to today answer how to do this. In policy iteration, we start by choosing a random arbitrary policy. We define our problem. We know its data space. We toss a coin. We say, okay, in this state, always I'm going to mostly exemplify based on the past planning and the tile. Each tile is one state considered in the class always. And, uh, and for example, in this tile that I'm staying, uh, randomly I say, if I have four actions, move forward, backward, left, right, randomly I choose one of them and put it here. And for each one of these, I'm doing that one, randomly. Then we are iteratively evaluating and improving the policy until convergence. So we have two steps. First, we want to evaluate. Then we want to improve it, the policy. And finally, we continue it until it converges. What does the convergence mean? Who knows? Convergence. Yeah, how? So, this is very common, like in machine learning, neural network, or any learning algorithm, convergence. So, this is like very, like, this is like add and subtract for mass. So convergence means that, like, mm, if you want, if you have a problem that this is reward or whatever it is, like, this can be accumulated reward or what, and uh, and the, this is the time step that is increasing. So convergence means that if you want to minimize the problem, then it means that if our algorithm works during time, the the reward. So since I'm written reward here. Let me write maximize. So if I want to maximize accumulated reward that I'm getting, so during time, if my algorithm works, of course the reward that I'm getting should be increased, right? Should be increased, 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 if my algorithm works. And increased, increased. In some time, the algorithm says or, or reaches to the point that there is no way to get better one, better result than the maximum reward that you're getting. Then this this stops. And whatever you continue, how much you continue, this stops. Yes? So this is convergence. It converges over there. There is no improvement anymore. If it is minimization, some other algorithm, that you want to minimize something, then it comes like this and goes down and converges somewhere. Like not here this time, because it still is decreasing. Clear? So, so, any learning algorithm that we have is based on this concept. We want to uh, uh, converge the, the result that we are getting, and here we want to do the apply these two steps we will see exactly also by numerical example and finally converge so that after a while we don't get any best one and these algorithms that we are studied proven that uh, if we converge that's optimal policy we cannot get any better result if converge but mostly in real applications uh, if if you don't know, uh, maybe there is better one that you can you can propose better algorithm that it goes a little bit higher. Any question? So therefore, as I mentioned, we have two steps uh, for policy iteration, policy evaluation, and policy improvement. In two steps, uh, let's see how we can do that. 
In policy evaluation step, we want to evaluate policy pi at state s so that we can calculate the q value using the Bellman equation. What was the q value? As I told you, you should restudy q value per, per, what was indicating per each state, the number of actions that we have, and per each action, one independent value, right? Q value. And we want to use Bellman equation in order to achieve it. Okay, how? Let's have a look at the Bellman equation. This equation is one of the most important equations that ever is exist in the reinforcement learning. Even the most advanced algorithms are relying on different forms of this. We are going to also use it a lot. Let's have a look in this form. That we say, uh, value of pi for state s. So we can calculate for, for state s the value of pi. It means that the value of the policy that we have, we have a policy that says from this state go here, the value that we have for it, for that state is equal to the reward that we get for that state added by discounted discounted sum of probabilities for each one of these states sum of the probabilities like in this form so in left side we have probability of the state transition that says uh, to state prime and R and reward how we can get given by state and policy S. So if I come from here, if I'm my robot is at state S, at state S, I'm running policy on that state. Where is it? I said you, we initially randomly, whatever it is. I'm running the policy on S and the given S, we can go to the S prime, S prime, next, next state, and get the reward. This term is state transition probability. That, for now, in next examples, you will see that we consider we have it. And this part is the value of the pi of the S prime. The, the value for the next. So, simply, in policy evaluation step, we need to calculate this, mm, this update on uh, evaluating our uh, values. That is Bellman equation. No worry, I'm going to also uh, dive in uh, with real examples that you can uh, make sure 100% you understand what's happening over there. So first step, policy evaluation step generally you saw what is happening and second step is the policy improvement step so that says okay i calculate the value but for calculating that value i've used the policy how can i improve the policy now by applying this equation now this time i am saying policy of the s the action is equal to arc max of the the probabilities of the uh, the same transition probability times the value of the pi that I'm getting. Then the maximum of this goes to my action. It means that I'm here, possible options that I have, I want to pick the best one and convert it to be as action or policy and update it. So any question? We will see numerical example for make it 100% clear, but so far you should, it should be clear, at least generally. A little bit blur for you maybe, but uh, we will quickly see uh, how to achieve it exactly. So we can say, uh, how does it look like in general? We have policy, the evaluation of the value pi s at the beginning, evaluate it. And uh, again, from the beginning, we have random. We have random policy. It is terrible, very bad, but we have something. So that we evaluate it, then 
we improve it up by updating the policy in the, uh, in the table that we have. So repeating these two steps until uh, value function converts, converts. There is no improvement anymore on the value that we have. And then uh, uh, again, replacing the each action that we have. Okay, now is the time to see one example to make it 100% clear for you. Uh, let's say we have this environment in the left side. And we have a robot over here. There are multiple rooms. And robot needs to collect some, some objects from different rooms. And finally, take them to his friend, other robot over here. So you can consider this is mobile manipulator that needs to collect some objects and put it on the, the other robot that needs to, uh, uh, needs to do some stuff, whatever it is. We want to solve this problem with policy iteration algorithm to see how a whole procedure can go. First of all, what I need to do, I need to do indicate the state space and my environment. So I can say here my state space is like e every small movement of robot, every sm small movement of arm of robot. But here, for simplicity, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't need it. I just want to say, OK, this is one state being in this room. Being in this room is another state. Being in this room, each one of these are different states. And my robot already knows how to go from here to there. I'm not going to solve it now. You may say, OK, do we, can we solve it? Yeah, we can. You can write reinforcement learning algorithm, any of these techniques. If you modulate it, you can solve that too. Can we do manipulation uh, with reinforcement learning? Yes, we can do. But in this example, we consider that our states being on different rooms. I discriticize the problem that I have. OK? What about the actions? Again, the actions are same as the state. Are they are tightly coupled, right? Any action that you do, new state comes. I want to also simplify it a lot to have numerical example. Otherwise, it exploits. We don't understand. So we say, OK, this robot can only look at here what can do go to next rooms in general. But let me say, OK, this robot can go to the right room or left room. And since we, don't, we know that we're going to go there, we don't want to come back also. I want to just simplify the problem. So robot from here can take right, left action. If goes here, can take if it has right, left action. And all the states can be defined over there by taking left and right actions. So uh, clear so far? Any question? So I'm coming from scratch. You should all 100% understand the algorithm. If you have any problem, just let me know. And the environment is a stochastic. Uh, it means that I have some probabilities of doing the action. I maybe robot maybe wants to go from here to there, maybe cannot, maybe end up in want to go left, goes to the right. Like wanted to go here, goes there, or wanted to go there, comes here. Why? Because of the error on the, your algorithm that you're detecting the doors left, right, and going. You develop image processing algorithm. You say, oh, this is very good. I'm going to detect left, right, and go. But sometimes it goes wrong room, right? Because of that, the environment is statistic. I will uh, show in the next slide what's happening. So based on that, we need to, uh, because of this, we need to make uh, and build the state transition probability matrix that uh, I will show in the next slide. For simplicity, let's say uh, my probability of the uh, being at the left room, probability of being at the left room is always 70%, and going to the right is 30%. So your algorithm is a little bit weird, and most, most probably, mostly, whatever you've written goes to the left side with 70%, goes to the right side with 30%. So 
Uh, you may say this is very bad case. It could have been 50-50. Yeah, depending on the algorithm that you've written here, just we have example to understand what's happening. Of course, in real application, we will change these to real parameters that we have based on the robot that we have or, uh, or whatever it is. Or it can be like being at left one, certainly we say, okay, goes to the left and goes to the right room and whatever it is. So actually the objective here is kind of uh, bringing the error that we have into our consideration in the system. So now I'm drawing the MDPs. Markov decision processes based on what we discussed. So all the efforts results that today I discussed comes here. It means that I'm naming the states like S1, S2, S3, S4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The order doesn't matter, just... And I'm saying from state 1 in the MDP, what actions I have going to state 2 and going to state 3. So that from state 1, I draw two possible states that connected to state one, from S1 to S2 and S3. And again, I continue that from S2, I can go to S4 and I can do S5. From S3, I can go to S6 and I can go S2, to S5 here, with left and right actions that I can, I can't do. Then from S6, I only can do S can go to the S8 and S5 can go to the S7 and S8 too. So both of these here and here. What else is missing? So we constructed MTP. The only thing is that missing is uh, the probability that I given to you. I told you by default I am considering the algorithm that we develop. The robot structure that we have, whatever it is, it is a little bit messy, but it is mostly goes to 70% to the left, 30% to the right. If, uh, 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 if we like run the, uh, if you wanna show the transition probability. And we have the rewards. So we define the rewards based on the each state that we have. As I mentioned multiple times, you can write a function to do that, or you can just give some signals to the robot. For example, here I indicated that being at S1 has no reward. Of course, already it is over there. But being at, at S2, S2 has two rewards. Why two rewards? For example, like this one, uh, you can collect two value, uh, two objects that they are uh, precious for us. So because of that, I put it plus two here. Here, if it goes to S3, we can collect just one object from there, then I put it uh, uh, plus three, plus one. If we go S4, of course, we cannot go anywhere else. Just consider going up for now. Then, then minus one, and there is no object over there. If we go to five, just three. If we go six, not only there is no nothing to collect, but also there are obstacles, and robot needs to struggle more to to uh, to avoid these to cross to go to the next state i even punish the robot put some uh, negative values over there and here lots of obstacles a terminal state and also no use for us minus seven for example and here since uh this is the objective that i have like i put positive five over there now we want to see how policy uh, iteration algorithm can solve this problem. That's, this is example that I defined for you. Is everything clear? Any question? So first of all, what we, what we need to do, we said that we need to have transition probability. And transition probability I already defined by the error that I have from the system that I know. And uh, uh, we, based on that, I can say for choose an action left, I can indicate this uh, matrix over here. This matrix says to me, okay, transition probability of the action left. If I do run action left, for example, from S1 going to S2 has 0 0.7, from S1 to S3 has 0 0.3. Why? Because 
I told you that left has higher probability, 70%. And going from S1 to S2 is mean left. You see left. Because of that, we have 0 0.7, and I put 0 0.7 over there. But going to S3 is right action, and I told you general rule that if we go right is 0 0.3, then I put 0 0.3 there. And I continue the same to update, just from S2, for example, to S4, S2 to S5. Whatever I have, I put over there. And one point from S6, from S6 here, I just have to, I just can go to the S8, right? So that the probability should be one here, because I don't have two options, just one action, then the its probability, is, of course, is one. Only possible action that I can run from here is going to S8 with one. Clear? Huh? Uh, I, mo I mentioned multiple times, this matrix comes from transition probability that we define on our problem and said, my robot, I developed image processing algorithm. And based on the algorithm that I defined, I How to compute? You just you just create a matrix for it. Huh? You create a matrix for it. Yeah, but how to obtain the entries of the matrix? So you know the values already. So when you know that going to the left is 70 percent and going to the right 30 percent, oh, so then you can bring it into here, right? Simply. Right. Oh, is that yeah, yeah, kind of uh, probable at term of the probability. Just you just some of them should be one. And you have many actions, then probability divided to actions that you have, and based on what you so define. I, I decide or produce by you decide, but it's not like a kind of randomly decide. Based on the problem that you have, you bring it. So it's not optimized in the it's not optimized. No. We know it already. For now, we assume that we know it already. This is representing transition probability of uh, like probability, of pro probability of one action. If I do left, what is the probability that really left happens? Is not certain. Is seventy percent. Not policy. Uh, no pro policy exactly says go to the left, not probability. Policy, no, exactly is the action that you choose. But it's a probability distribution, right? Can be, can be represented as probability distribution, but exactly says what to do, policy. Policy exactly says, from this state, if I have four options, what to do, exactly says. Okay. Yeah. But transition probability says, what is the chance of, if I run the left action, so Not really. Transition probability is just based on the if I do action A and if I do action B, what is the probability that action A is happening exactly? Transition probability says this to us, nothing else. What, what do I do with this information? This information is error. Is the error of the environment, error of your problem. Like you develop again, you develop for example, image processing algorithm, and that image processing algorithm uh, and the robot, robot, uh, robot execution commands that says, okay, go run action left, but it's 70% to happen likely. 30% maybe goes to the right. That's that transition probability, not policy. Yeah, kind of error. Yeah, yeah, error. Okay, so, uh, so I use this to kind of like optimize my policy? Yeah. And we use this to optimize the policy, and in future, we will see algorithms. If we don't have this, what happens? Yeah, we will see. So if we don't have this, what happens then? We will see in 
next chapter, the algorithms. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. So, what about the transition probability of action left? I define what about the probability of the transition probability of action right? I define for that too. Just here, the terms are in changed. There, from S1 to ST was, S2 was 0 0.7. Here is 0 0.3. There, they swapped. Because now I'm talking about action right. An action right, based on the general that I've chosen, is uh, uh, indicated like that one, but here is like 7.3, there 0 0.3, 0 0.7. And all coming from here, just, just the rule that indicated from the problem that we have. So, after defining that transition probability, uh, we have a couple of assumptions. We say, okay, let's assume this con factor is 0 0.9. Who decide? We decide. We could have write 0 0.95. We could have put 0 0.8. Based on the problem, based on our experiences, uh, we can uh, indicate the discount factor. And, uh, and here, we assume that all states' initial value is 0 at the beginning. Can it be something else? Yes, it can. And uh, uh, please, everybody, attention here. And uh, so this zero means that we don't know. Can be random or can be something more smart that I later tell you. This can be very helpful for solving advanced problems and it is also a branch of techniques that we will, uh, I will uh, explain to you later. So for now, value, values are zero. An initial policy for the problem that I have looks like this. I have a table for each one of these states. I have some random actions. For example, for state one, I have right. For state two, I have right. All of them, for example, here is randomly right. And for the states that are terminal, so I cannot go anywhere else, I, I just like put it like dash. No action anymore there. Now, policy iteration algorithm wants to kind of improve this one. Kind of find the optimal solution for problem that I define. Let's see how that's happening, step by step. So I indicated the policy pi, uh, the table over there all the time, you will see, and the value v pi. So as I said to you, this is initially zero, all the values for each state. Then uh, I want to discuss first step of the policy evaluation step. How was that? I indicated the equation for you. I explained what is happening value pi s is equal to reward added by the probability times of the value pi s prime. So in the first iteration, for policy evaluation, only for s1. So what happened to my... I think the battery is dead. For, uh, for s1, we want to see what to do. I write the term that we have, but I want to calculate value of policy of the S1, state one, this one. Actually, this one. I want to update this one, value here. Is equal to reward of S1. I just replace this S with S1. Added by this con factor, 0 0.9, I defined it. And some of this probability. And some of this probability says for all of these s primes that is uh, included at the s. It means that all next possible states from current state, so this is important, from current state, all possible next states where I can go. 
sum of all of them in form of probability of them times the value of the S prime. That in probability form, we say probability of the going to S prime by V bar given by S1 and policy of S1 by, by doing the policy of S1 and, and the value of S prime. So let me put the values inside to see uh, how it looks like. Value of S1 is equal to reward is zero. Where it is coming from? Here. Value of S1 is zero. Added by the probability, the, the discount factor that I had, 0 0.9. Same. Then times the probability of going from S prime to, to next state, S2 and S3. So I'm in S1, I need to include from the, the, the next ones, both of the next ones, since we have sigma term here, so that S2 and S3. So going to S2 has probability of 0 0.7, 0 0.7. And the value of pi of the S prime, value of the S prime comes from where this table, it is zero, goes there. This is S2 from S1 going to S2, from S1 going to S3, there. Then this 0 0.3 comes here, and this zero comes from the value that we have for, for uh, S3, state three. Then I calculate it. What happens? I update my uh, Value, uh, value of policy of the S1, that goes here as zero. It was zero, again this is zero. That's okay because I calculated it became zero. Any question? Questions from me, if you have. Okay, let's move to the next. Uh, same, I have the policy and I have the value. Then, again, I have the equation of the update of the value, Bellman equation. Then uh, we want to now calculate for only S2. We calculated for S1, now we want to calculate for S2. What we do, we write the same equation, this time with S2. Value of S2 looks like this. That if I go move to the next step, this time the reward that I have is 2. Why? Because it is indicated already. Okay? And from S2, I can go to the S4 and S5. And the probabilities are already indicated by the table that I gave. And I can, I can put it here, 0 0.7, times the value where is the value? The value is here. S4 is here. Again, 0 comes here. And uh, going to S5, the reward is uh, not, not reward. Uh, reward already for the S2. Uh, the probability of going there is 0 0.7 times 0 that uh, S5 again is 0 over there and comes here. And again, we have uh, the directly the reward, actually, because this, this term again becomes 0. Why this is happening? Because the value initially is zero. And if we continue this, uh, uh, first of all, we update S2 here, put two here. Then if we continue this, you will see that, okay, uh, in the first iteration, since the value all are zero, uh, all the table becomes exactly the reward that we have. The rewards are actually every time coming here and you continue every time rewards are coming here and getting updated. After first iteration, we have the t value, uh, uh, value of the table, uh, the, the, the value of uh, V policy looks like this. Is it clear so far?
So I also, I think, written here that, okay, reward comes, and since this is always zero, uh, this part, red part, uh, that causes right side become zero, and always reward goes. Because of that, I didn't show the continuation. Now, uh, our value, uh, value for the policy indicated currently looks like this. And what we want to do now, we need to run the second step. As we said, policy improvement step. One iteration, we ran the uh, evaluation step. Now we need to run the policy improvement steps. What does it mean? It means that based on this value that I've get, I want to update the policy that I have. So for example, if you want to calculate it for S1, let's see what happens. So the equation that I have, policy S is equal to arc max of the all actions, possible actions that I have, arc max of the possible actions, uh, times this kind of factor, sum of the, uh, the probabilities and values. This part is similar, but here I have this time arc max. I want to kind of get the maximum action that I have over there based on the what I get from value. So let's talk about the uh, for uh, S1, state one, and action left. So I want to calculate action left of this part. So uh, what it looks like, value pi of the S1 is equal to, so argmax I keep it for now because I want to show it later, discount factor times sum of this term over here, the same term, and uh, this comes again uh, uh, because we are in S1 uh, uh, from the state MDPs, from S1 we could have go to S2 and S3, and that indicates that one over there, and if I calculate it, you will see that V pi S1 is 0 0.9 times 0 0.7 times 2. And this 2 comes from here. Now this time is not 0 anymore. 2 comes here. Then here for S3, 1 comes here. Then uh, those probabilities I've shown that they are coming from that table over there. Then, if you calculate the value, this simple mass, it gives you a value, for example, 1.53. This was only for left one, left action. And I brought the 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 from table, the transition probability from uh, doing picking action left. The same thing for picking action right, because I want to get our max of the all actions. I do it for right action again. So in right action, all, all the parameters, everything is the same, except here this part that comes from this time, this table over there, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. And the calculation result, for example, 1.17. Then what I need to do, which one is bigger? Arc max. Arc max picks the bigger one. And based on that bigger one, we update the policy that we have. Why that became left? Because left was bigger. The value for left was bigger, then we updated the policy pi of S1 to the left. Clear? I think it's impossible to make it more clear than this. <laughs> So let me see what we have in the next one. Okay. Now we updated that one, left, and, uh, and we want to move to S2 now. Now current state is S2. The yellow is showing uh, S, uh, the current state, and these one are the primes or next possible states that we can achieve from current state. Uh, for the policy improvement step for S2 and the left, 
what we do, we calculate the same and put the values over here, 0 0.7 minus 1, minus 1 comes from here from S4 because from S2 I could have gone to the S4 and S5, so S4 minus 1 comes here and S5, 3 comes here, then I calculate the value, 0 0.18 for the action right, uh, uh, I need to do the same thing, but the probabilities are just based on the other table from right side, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 0 0.3, 0 0.7. Uh, then I have another value for S2. Of if I choose right action, then what I do, I get arc max of the uh, two actions, and here is right. 1.62. Then this one stays right, actually, but I updated the uh, policy of the uh, robot movement in the, in the table that we have. Then I, I continued a little bit more, like S3, after S2, S3. For S3, again, I'm going to get argmax. What I do, the same thing from left, I calculate it. All the things come from tables, the, and values come from value, 1.08. For the right, again, uh, something minus, minus 1.89. And of course, left is better than an update I update S3, then continue to S5. From S5 left, show some value, minus point, uh, 3.6. And the right side, uh, minus 0 0.54. And, uh, and that one is better because both are negative. That one is higher, uh, the arc max. Then again for uh, S5, I update here, right because that one is bigger. And for S6, yeah, this is a nice example. For S6, uh, now only I have one, one state that I can go, only S8. Let's have a look what is happening. Only I need to calculate the uh, iteration for left. And what is happening is, uh, is calculating. And, uh, and here, you can see that the probability is 1. And probability is 1, whatever the value comes, 4.5, and shows that I have to actually, from S6, run it to the left. But initially, it was random, right? You may think, OK, why are we running? Because initially, it was random, and it was, it was right. We could have like indicate, OK, if there is one action, my my value, uh, uh, my, my policy at the beginning, so if there is no option, why put the other possible ones? You could do that. You can do that and ignore this part over here. If you have one action, then that's the only way to do. So, or if you calculate, you also can see that the same value comes and it updates automatically the value that, the, the policy that you have, then there is no problem in two cases of the implementation that you want to have. So now let's visualize it after just two iterations, one iteration of running for one time uh, evaluation, one time uh, updating. Let's see what is looking like. I just draw the MDP again. And on the MDP, I just draw them by, uh, by marker. If like S1, if I'm in the S1 state one, says that my policy says that go to the left. It is better to go to the left. If I'm in S2, what does it say? It says go to the right. If I'm in S3, S3, it says go to the left, not right. S5, go to the right, and S6, go to the left. And have a look here. Is it good or bad? So from S1, if I go to, go to S2, it is positive 2. And if, if our, without looking at the policy, if I want to, we wanted to choose, it would be wiser to go to the S2. And from S2, is it wiser to go S4 or S5? S5 is better because this is terminal or I get punished also. This, here I can collect positive three. It says, okay, uh, for me, like I go to S5, that's better. And the policy that we found also with policy iteration says here left and it says here right. 
And what about from S5? From S5, we go to S7, goes negative 7. But going to S8 is positive 5. Of course, it is wiser to go to the right. And also, policy says go to the right. Although the problem is simple here, how complex it is, if you run it enough, it will find you best answer possible that it is on the problem that you have. And also, uh, what we've done, uh, we, uh, based on the problem that we have, we also consider transition probability that this error, error of the system that we have, we considered also injected into problem. Then, considering that also, it finds us the best optimal pass. Is it the end here? Is it convergence? No, we can continue this. If we continue, we continue until uh, converge and no change anymore, then we can stop. Here you can see policy iteration uh, algorithm so that uh, the same concept, just first initialization, second policy evaluation, that I represent by, by example, what is happening, for example, this is when manipulation updates and getting the arg max each time inside the for loop. And when, when it reaches to convergence or a small positive number of the uh, uh, change over there, uh, we can repeat it and come to the second stage as, as policy improvement and improve the whole policy that we have. So exactly the same explanation, but here, here updating of the value, and here updating of the policy, policy S, by getting arg max this time. OK. So <clears throat> now we want to move to the, uh, the other algorithm, value iteration algorithm that again is based on the Markov decision processes. And it is, uh, it is very similar, but let's see what are the differences and how it is working. Uh, we say value iteration is also uh, the algorithm that is based on the Bellman equation. And uh, it assesses this time, not the policy, but also the value directly. So, so the slight change and the difference is over here that we are going to rely on value directly and whatever it is finally get the policy. Let's see how it is happening. So it compounds the optimal state value function by iteratively updating the estimation of the V pi S again. And it is updating the, uh, the state value function in single step, finally, at the, uh, when everything is finishing. How this is possible? This is possible by calculating all possible rewards by looking forward of the what's happening. And, uh, and of course, we slightly need to change the uh, term that we have, the minimum term that we have, uh, to achieve it. Same as previous algorithm, the value iteration also is uh, guaranteed to have convergence that we discussed over there. Same as before, we start with a random value function, v pi s. And what we do, uh, we apply the Bellman equation, reward s added by gamma, maximum of these value that we have. So, uh, so I already declared it uh, that you know now the transition probability, you know now the, the value pi s, and here. So the difference is, is that also here we are getting the maximum this time. And the slight change is over here. The idea is taking the maximum over possible actions in value iteration algorithm during time that we are improving the uh, value. 
So not like updating the value, updating the value, updating the value in one iteration, then after, uh, after we reach a point that is not changing, then updating policy, updating policy, and then again putting in the loop. This time we directly want to interact with the value directly, with plugging maximum of the value that we can achieve over there uh, uh, to have. But how? How that's possible? That's very simple. For the max of the A, maximum of the all the actions, we do similar that what we've done in second step of the previous policy iteration algorithm. We can say, uh, for arbitrary problem, we can write value of the pi. For, for example, if we have S1 is equal to reward of S1 added by this factor, maximum of this term over here. That maximum of this term over here now separated by different actions. That I can show it like this. For example, if you have two actions like left and right, we can separate them, calculate once for left, once for right, and this time instead of summing them up and bringing updating value pi, this time getting maximum and adding by reward and updating the value pi. So if you get this part, everything else is, uh, is very easy. Any question? Let's discuss with the same example. I didn't change the example because of the understanding uh, what is going on exactly, the same scenario. The robot can be different, but the same situation, whatever it is. The transition probabilities are also the same. And uh, let's have a look how we can update it. So I don't know, do we have batteries here? Okay. I need to move more. We have the uh, Markov decision processes. We have the values as initialized to zero again. And now we have this uh, Bellman equation with term max. What is happening for first iteration of the S1? Let's see how we can calculate it. We can write the S1 equal to reward of S1 added by discounted factor of the max of the uh, uh, two terms, one is uh, for S1, uh, one is for, uh, we have two, two possible options here, two, S2 and S3. For each one of them, we can calculate and get the max. So how it looks like, reward is zero, come from there again, and here maximum of the both actions for left and for right. And since at the beginning the value is zero here again, the uh, uh, the term looks like this, the maximum of the, this term and this term, of course, it's zero. And again, the reward directly goes to uh, the value. So V pi becomes zero and it goes to S1. Pretty similar to previous one. But this time, of course, we have the max not updating the uh, sum of them. If we continue to S2, the same scenario, again, it should be zero right side and here the value and the value comes directly here by looking at this for first iteration everything should be same and values are directly coming to the uh the, 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 the rewards directly coming to the value uh, i want to mention one point here so in this our scenario this is happening maybe you have another scenario that this is not happening at first iteration depending on the problem that you have. Maybe this value comes and reads another one, the previous one, then it, it is not going to be zero. It is not going to be, to be directly the, the, uh, the rewards coming to value. It is not, when, you, when I show this, you may think always that is uh, first iteration, you copy that, copy it into, no. Depends on the problem that you have. Here, this happens. Now, uh, to make it more clear, we don't have uh, the moving to policy improvement step for now. We don't do that in value iteration. We continue this procedure. What is happening? Again, for S1, S2, S3, we bring the values. And here, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, again, comes from that matrix. And the values comes from here, S2 to 
2 and S3 1. And for the second one, 0 0.3 times 2, 0 0.7 times 1. And if we get the max of these, calculate and get the max of these, uh, I've shown like this, S2, S3, the max of 1.7, 1.3, uh, of course, uh, 1.7 is bigger, comes times 0 0.9, added by 0, comes a value, 1.53. And uh, what we need to do now, we need to update our S1 value again. So now if you notice, we're just working on uh, optimizing this value in value tree. We continue, I, uh, I continue this couple of times to make it more uh, understandable. We, go, we, we move to S2, S2 values coming from the table, the next states and the, and the reward that we get from S2, then we continue with S4 and S5 and get the max of these and uh, times this equation, then we get the new value and update it, S2, right? Continue with S3, do the same thing, getting the maximum, then calculation, then we have the value, then we update the value, S3. Continue. From S4, so uh, from S4, since it is terminate, terminal uh, state, we can calculate it also or we can ignore it. So if we ignore it, uh, uh, I, I've shown this here because like you, if you look at here, S4 is minus one, right? The value, if we also recalculate it, the value is supposed to be same and not change. So because of that, you can ignore it. But even though if you calculate it, I wanted to show that you, you should see that the value becomes same. So arg max of zero, zero here, because mm, that's, mm, there is no other probability to go somewhere. And whatever the value was at the beginning as reward, directly again comes to value and no change anymore. How many times you calculate it, it again stays stationary. Because of that, you can put one if in your implementation to ignore those, those states that are uh, terminal state and there is no, uh, no way to move. But if you calculate it, no, no problem. Uh, still, the result will be same. Then I can continue with S5. In S5, should be pretty same. Minus three is the mm, uh, reward that I have here. So I think it should be positive three. Uh, that we have a small mistake here. So let me have a look in previous ones. Minus one, uh, minus three, positive three. I'm not sure that if I calculate it wrongly or not, but it should be positive. Maybe this is uh, this is typos. Uh, you should calculate it yourself to see. Anyway, finally some value comes. The calculation comes, and this goes to uh, update the. S5, whatever the value is. Then we continue with S6. Then in S6, mm, we have another nice example that we have one state to go. And if we calculate it again here, you can see that uh, we have the uh, value that of course we need to calculate. Then update of the value comes to 1.5. I think that's like I bring it, I forgot to uh, update it, I will check it. I think the values are correct. Just I didn't remember to uh, change the values in this slide. I will correct it for, uh, before sending it. Then since the updates are not changing, determinate, I didn't calculate it and let it like that. After first stage finished, uh, now, uh, and what, what does it mean the first stage finish uh, when we stop? We stop when we get to the convergence point. And convergence point, are, as I declared here, continues same with next iteration until converge. And, uh, and for the convergence, uh, to make it easier to uh, also program, we have uh, implementation or the term build one factor that uh, is, is known for this problem. We, in practice, we can say, uh, uh, if, if value function 
changed by only a small amount of change, uh, then we can stop it. That that small amount of change can be defined as Bellman factor, and we can write a variable that, for example, 0 0.01. Then if, if the values in the update table that we have is not changing more than this, then we can stop. Because maybe they are changing but very, very small value, then we can, okay, say that that's it, enough. Uh, don't, don't continue it anymore. So after convergence, uh, the values look like this in this example. So I've developed some code I will show you that uh, after you run this, we're supposed to, I think, see this as uh, like, uh, then it's, uh, it, it, it's not improving anymore. For convergence, we have a couple of nodes. State space and action space should be finite. A reward value should have an upper and lower bound, and environment should be episodic. If continuous, then uh, we should at least uh, have this con factor that should be less than one, so that considers the uh, infinity uh, number of states that we have for convergence points. But the second step, now we need to update the policy. So up to here, we calculated this table. Now, but this table should be indicate something meaningful for us, the policy. And the policy can be updated by this equation here that we have. The same equation of the previous uh, policy iteration in value iteration. We just need to update each one time running of the uh, loop to update the policy that we have in the table. So how that's happening, that's happening here. Uh, policy update, the equation that I have, and, uh, and here you can see that uh, I'm getting the argmax of the, this term and this term. Very similar, I calculate it, then getting the argmax of the, which one is uh, better, which one is bigger. So argmax of the calculation 4.2. 314 and 4.186. I can show it in this form, argmax of these two values, that this one indicates left one, because here I calculated left. If, if you look here, left, left, and this one left, and here right, right, right one, action right, then which one is bigger? Left is bigger, and if I continue, I update the policy pi in table that I have. Clear? So if you continue this whole process, you end up with this table, but one time running. For each one of these one time running, I get the policy. Any question? So now that's your assignment. Uh, So here you need to do uh, what if robot uh, have more actions like stop and show the results that if robot can go back from the previous steps too. So you need to do, uh, I will give you implementation, I will sell you one. You need to develop the, the uh, example somehow that make it a little bit complexer so that not only moving forward, actually have moving backward action too. Then how we can represent it. We will see uh, in the uh, example, uh, but general idea is this. Just the table becomes bigger. And all the implementations, all the calculations are safe. Yeah? Because, because one time we have we have two actions, left and right. If I pick the left action, based on the error that I have, I pick left action. Based on the error that I have, is different if I pick right action. I want to run left, but my probability says 30%, 70%. If I pick right, that becomes vice versa. 
Yeah, based on what you want to do. If you want to go to right, it's more likely to go to the left, and the probability is different, right? 70, 30. And if you want to pick vice versa, they become vice versa. It's like in mass, uh, something how likely is happening or not happening. You know, we can form a represent to something is happening or not happening in probability. Yeah, based on your choice. Exactly. So uh, look at the algorithm that we have. Now we have shorter algorithm because one time we are having, we having a loop and this loop is updates our uh, value, value for state that you, you saw. We, now we have also max here that gets max and updates value. After this converges, after this finished, one time of running for policy. We update the policy for each one of the states that we have to indicate what robot needs to really do in state space, each one of simple states, single states. So if you look at the equation, uh, the algorithm, exactly the same one, uh, we initialize by zero, for example, then uh, bring it to the value, then get the maximum each time, and put the maximum on the delta, and uh, if it's not changing anymore, like theta is like the, the, um, the small value that is not changing, then go to update it. Now let's have a comparison. Uh, if, we, if you ans ask the question, okay, which one is better, or both are doing the same thing, what are the differences? Let's have a look for value iteration and policy iteration. So in value iteration, we needed to do more iterations. But in policy iteration, we need to do lower iterations, number of iterations that we need to run. The value iteration is slower, policy iteration is faster. This is starts with random value function, that is starts with random policy. So uh, it relies on actually random policy at the beginning. And uh, here we have simpler algorithm, but on the other hand, the order, and there we have more complex that, that if you have a look at the loops that we have, uh, that is uh, cubic, but uh, uh, that is uh, pow two, and here we have pow three, that is, of course, uh, bigger. Square and cubic. Then if you look at the visual, how that is uh, converging, you can see that um, there, actually each time we, we start with value and policy randomly, and we moving toward the, uh, uh, toward the optimizing the value, like toward the value pi that we have, to, toward the, uh, the updating the value, and here toward the greedy value so that we are jumping like in between those two, uh, between greedy and the value that we have to finally converge. But here, uh, in value iteration, we directly consider about the value and try to optimize it and, and uh, go like this, 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 this to find the uh, optimal policy. Because of this, it is slower and that is faster. But the... Uh, uh, but the benefits and the shortcomings are uh, kind of, if you consider complexity, that's much, much better as value iteration for us. But both of them are guaranteed to be converged and find the optimal policy uh, for the, the assumptions that we have. What else we can do? Uh, one more algorithm. Uh, everything is same, but here we can use benefits of both of those. Think about it yourself, how it can be possible. What's your idea? If you want to merge them. It is written there, but think yourself. So, one of the algorithms were running forever the value update, then finally find the, uh, find the policy, best policy. Other one each time was doing that. 
one of the algorithms that have is modify poly situation and says, okay, do that in k times. Limit number of times to update the policy, update the value, then after each k time, update policy. Not like this one that does forever, like value iteration does forever, updating value finally updates the policy. The other one each time doing that, but this time let's indicate k times and k times of value, then one time policy. k times of value, one time policy. Then we have modified policy iteration algorithm. That is better than both of them. Uh, next slide or oh, not uh, to one slide later i will tell you that uh, usually works better than both of them so how it look like first step repeat k times of this term and second step so we have policy evaluation step calculate the uh, value update but not with the max and here policy improvement getting the max but the difference is that just only do that at the first step k times <coughs> so if you want to compare them the value iteration is uh, simpler policy iteration costs as we discussed and modified policy iteration is uh, it's kind of using advantages of both, and it is cubic, the complexity. The number of the actions times number of the states, then added by k times of the number of the states, uh, power to two. Then, then we don't have this complexity here, but we are going to kind of uh, uh, use uh, use more smarter way so that we can say uh, modified policy iteration usually is faster than both value and policy iterations if you implement it and if you of course uh, can can pick proper k for algorithm that you have another assignment that you have uh, of course for whose students that have slam class because we have also multiple assignments there I will give some exceptions to give more time for them. So, uh, implementing all three algorithms, but I'm going to give you one now. I'm going to explain you which one. I think value iteration. Then, then you just need to, uh, the, the policy iteration is very simple. Just you need to modify it a little bit. And modify policy iteration, you just need to a little bit modify it again. Just you need to first understand how it works, then uh, uh, then bring it uh, to comparison for. So let me see what we have here. Okay, one more slide uh, before going to code. Take. Uh, consider that we talked about finite number of steps if we have uh, infinity number of episodes or uh, horizon we say in infinity we can uh, uh, we can have stationary optimal policy because always end is not clear and you should think now uh, why how about this term only it means that like maybe a little bit uh, understanding only we can have a stationary optimal policy. It means that since we have limited uh, history that we are going to get considered, we cannot consider infinity so that the, uh, uh, the uh, 
the optimal policy is also stationary based on the, uh, the, the, the history that we are considering. That's the reason. And infinity, in infinite, infinite horizon, uh, the optimal policy can be non-stationary non optimal policy since we, clo uh, we, uh, uh, we are as close as we get to the end of the station and we can uh, consider all different possibilities for finite world. So what is the challenge? The challenge is uh, for infinity horizon in value iteration, we cannot calculate uh, infinite uh, uh, infinity steps. So uh, since we cannot calculate it, this uh, leads us to have limitation, to have a stationary optimal policy. Okay, 